and events leading up to our entry into the war. Well, what are the causes? Why are we Americans on the march? Is it because of... Pearl Harbor? Is that why we are fighting? Or is it because of... Britain? Norway. Poland. Holland. Greece. Belgium. Albania. Yugoslavia. Or Russia. Just what was it made us change our way of living overnight? What turned our resources, our machines, our whole nation into one vast arsenal, producing more and more weapons of war instead of the old materials of peace? What put us into uniform, ready to engage the enemy on every continent and every ocean? What are these two worlds of which Mr. Wallace spoke? The free and the slave. Let's take the free world first, our world. How did it become free? Only through a long and unceasing struggle inspired by men of vision. Moses. Muhammad. Confucius. Christ. All believed that in the sight of God, all men were created equal. And from that there developed a spirit among men and nations, which is best expressed in our own declaration of freedom. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. It is the cornerstone upon which our nation was built and the ideal of all the great liberators, Washington, Jefferson, Garibaldi, Lafayette, Kosciuszko, Bolivar, Lincoln. Lighthouses lighting up a dark and foggy world. That government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Fighting, living, dying, for what? For freedom, that for which men have fought since time began, to be free. Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, 
Give me liberty or give me death. But what of this other world? Here, men insisted that progress lay in killing freedom. Here, they were putting out the lighthouses, one by one. Here, the march of history was reversing itself. In Italy, it began when an ambitious rabble-rouser set his followers marching on Rome. The country, like every other country after the last war, was torn by political unrest, hard times, unemployment. Two courses were available to the Italian people. They could solve their problems in a free democratic way, or they could let someone else do the solving for them. They made the tragic mistake of choosing the second course. They put their trust and faith in this one man. They believed he represented them. Actually, he planned to betray them for the selfish interests of himself and the group back of him, just as he had earlier betrayed those who first supported him. In Germany, another and even more forceful demagogue set his followers marching from the Munich beer halls. He too had the sinister opportunity to take advantage of post-war chaos. But he also had certain distinctive German characteristics to play on. To start with, the Germans have an inborn national love of regimentation and harsh discipline. He could give them that. The German army and through them the people had never acknowledged German defeat in the last war and were anxious for revenge. That too he promised them. The wealthy and powerful industrialists were fearful of losing any of their wealth and power and were ready to back anyone who would retain it for them. He promised to take care of them too. This man cunningly played all these ends against the middle and ruthlessly set out to murder the newborn German Republic. Japan, you'd expect things to be done a little differently. They were. Here, not one man, but a gang, disguised their little schemes as the will of the emperor. And to the Japanese people, the emperor is God. Taking advantage of their fanatical worship of the god emperor, it was no great trick to take away what little freedom they had ever known. Yet, Italy conquered Ethiopia. Many of our elected leaders warned us of danger. Without a declaration of war, and without warning or justification of any kind, civilians, including vast numbers of women and children, are being ruthlessly murdered with bombs from the air. But we were still hypnotized by the fact that two broad oceans stood between us and the rest of the world. We didn't realize that the time when months were needed to span these oceans was ended that the steamship had cut these months to days, and that now the whole Earth's surface could be covered in a space of hours. Yes, we were a nation that wanted peace, but we hadn't yet learned that peace for us depends on peace for all. Nobody would run the risk of war because of some mud huts and barren plains in Ethiopia, any more than we would run the risk for some similar huts and plains in Manchuria. Correctly interpreting our attitude, the aggressors were all the surer that they could get what they wanted. Japan had started on her march of conquest. Italy had begun her new empire. And now the third gangster. What about him? We'll take him up on our next film and show how he joined his partners and put in his bid. For this is what we are fighting. Freedom's oldest enemy. The passion of the few to rule the many. This isn't just a war. This is a common man's life and death struggle against those who would put him back into slavery. We lose it, and we lose everything. Our homes. The jobs we want to go back to. The books we read. The very food we eat. The hopes we have for our kids. The kids themselves. They won't be ours anymore. That's what's at stake. It's us or them. The chips are down. 
two worlds stand against each other. One must die, one must live. 170 years of freedom decrees our answer. Oh,